Thanks everybody for joining and welcome. My name is Dennis Arnold. I'm a channel SE here at Nutanix. I've been at Nutanix now as of this week, as of Monday, uh, it was my uh, six year anniversary uh, with Nutanix. So I'm, I'm starting to feel like uh, a little bit of a, a Nutanix old timer, right? I, uh, and, and Nutanix, you know, the most people think of us as still as a, as a relatively new company, although we've been around for, uh, for over a decade now. We'll talk about some some times and dates, but um, I'm based in uh, the Dallas Fort Worth area, and uh, um, I came to uh, to Nutanix from Citrix. Um, Dana mentioned EUC as a workload type. Uh, I've 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 lived through many many uh, buildups of of EUC deployments, and I've seen firsthand. And I've been involved firsthand in a lot of the the shortcomings that a legacy infrastructure uh, uh, creates for virtual desktop infrastructure. But that's not what we're going to focus on today. Today, we're going to focus on Nutanix as a VMware alternative. And I'm going to start with a story. Um, many of you may have heard this story before. Uh, many of you may have not heard this story before. But if you have, uh, stick with me. And uh, and we'll get to the meat of this uh, this discussion coming up very very quickly. So I want to start with with these two fellows that you see right here, uh, Larry and Sergey. As soon as I get my slides working, sorry. There we go. Um, <clears throat> Larry and Sergey in the mid to late '90s were PhD students at Stanford, and they had this project whereby they had to. Uh, create or maybe identify a system that had the ability to rank web pages, right? So they developed this algorithm and that algorithm allowed them to rank web pages by search results. And it was kind of an interesting thing. Um, and what they did was uh, obviously they, they did well on this assignment. And what they did was they thought that maybe uh, other companies in 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 IT in the world, hyperscalers were coming online back then. I uh, thought that they could use this technology. So Larry and Sergey tried to sell that algorithm, tried to sell this this technology to some companies in the valley. They they were getting some traction with uh, a web hosting company called Excite, um, but they wanted a million dollars for for this thing that they had had developed this algorithm. Um, they were denied. They were not able to sell it. So they inevitably decided to take this technology, get some uh, um, venture capital and create their own company. And in case you don't recognize these two folks, um, this is uh, Larry and Sergey. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, they were the founders of Google, right? So they founded this company called Google. And after they founded the company and they got things rolling, uh, a few years later, uh, I think sometime around 2002, Yahoo actually tried to buy uh, Google from these two folks, and Yahoo offered them $3 billion. I want you to think about that for a second. They wanted a million. They couldn't find a buyer. And then Yahoo comes along a few years later and tries to buy it for $3 billion. And I want you to sort of plant this idea in your mind. How do you go? from a million to three billion, right? Legitimately, not, not through, uh, you know, stealing bearer bonds and gold or whatever, right? Nobody's gonna do that. Um, and now they have a market cap. Google has a market cap of 167 billion and Yahoo has a market cap of 27 billion. So in some ways that is a bit of an oopsie on Yahoo's part. But anyway, the core of what they were doing was using data. For something they were they were using data they were gathering data and remember that back in that time um data centers were built using a variety of different constructs right and those constructs are listed here you built the data out of servers switches sand nas very function specific hardware deploying it was very labor intensive it took a long time to fix it um, you couldn't innovate very quickly with it. And we referred to this as a hardware-defined data center, right? So we had to build up the, the, the hardware out of parts and pieces. And most of the time, uh, we would build this out of what we could get for the best price, okay? Well, what did Larry and Sergey do? Did they? Do you think they adopted this model? Remember, they went from a million to three billion based on what? Data. They had to use data. That was the core of their business. That 
is what they had for sale. Okay. So what they did was they developed this uh, operating system, actually. It was called GFS, and they called that Google File System. The Google File System did not use SAN. It used software to aggregate, compute, and storage. If you're a Nutanix customer, this is probably going to sound familiar to you already. But back then, when this was developed, the enterprise and regular customers like you and I may have been back at that time did not have this capability. Only the hyperscalers were building up in this model. The rest of us were using these same old constructs, servers, storage, storage network, switches, okay, for all of this data. Now, we still use a lot of those constructs now. But there was another thing uh, back in that time that was going on that was very interesting, right? There was this company called VMware. And VMware all of a sudden sort of showed up and started doing some very interesting things with that old bare metal hardware, right? Because remember, it used to be that you would get bare metal hardware and you would put an operating system on it and you would deploy some workload. So it was single function hardware. You might put a database on it. You might put a, a domain controller uh, on it, or you might build it up as a web server. But that server did that one thing. Well, what did VMware do? They allowed us to virtualize that and carve it up so that we could make maximum effective use of that hardware. And that's described here. If you're speed reading this article, from uh, July 21st of 2003, um, you know what VMware did for us back then. Well, in 2003, more specifically around the July timeframe, VMware introduced this thing called vMotion. And vMotion was like fire for IT people, as some people say, right? The thing about vMotion though is it required shared storage. It required SAN, right? It required the thing that Google was not interested in, in at all, okay? So, and that's, a, that's an important distinction. Google was on this path of web scale, fast innovation, fail fast, fast to fix, so on and so forth, massively scalable with ease of scalability. But the rest of us were stuck with the sand. Uh, stuck with legacy infrastructure. So how did we modernize that? We put a virtualization layer on that server and allows us to capture the absolute maximum use out of that server. And I want you to take that idea and sort of put it in your back pocket for now. Because you had to have a SAN. Now, a SAN brought in a lot of complexity also. I mean, if you look at this diagram, this is what you needed for vMotion, right? You needed servers, you needed a SAN, you needed the hypervisor, you needed a storage network, you needed a data network, you needed a vMotion network, right? It was great, but it was complex. And not only that, but you needed two of everything, right? How, how, could, you, how could you build this up and not have redundancy um, and not have failover capability? This is the architecture that drove Stan. Stan, it still does, right? And in 2004, only like five months or so after VMware announced the release of vMotion, that capability, what happened? EMC, the big SAN player, buys VMware. It's a smart move, right? Because if I buy the software that's driving adoption of SAN, bah, then uh, I have the best of both worlds, right? Well, back there in the background, guess what the hyperscalers uh, weren't doing? like Facebook and Google and Microsoft, they weren't buying SANS, right? They were developing their own systems. So in 2009, um, some of the guys who were former Google employees who worked on GFS, they decided that they wanted to bring software-defined data center to the masses, not just for the hyperscalers, right? So Nutanix was formed in 2009. Remember, that the Google file system was not commercially available um, until the founders of Nutanix brought that hyperscaler method or also known as the web scale model on-prem. And sometimes, you know, ask people, you know, think back to, to that time period. If, if that web scale model 
would have been available to you back then, what would you have chose? Would you have chosen to buy physical servers and a SAN and a SAN network and cobble it all together from different vendors with different pieces, with different management? Or would you have chosen to deploy software on commodity servers so that they all collectively presented resources, right? Would you have bought your own cloud is the question, right? So I want you to think about that because the reality of it is we don't know what kind of pain we're in until we get something better. So, so what does something better look like, right? It scales fast. It upgrades fast. Um, it it uh, um, has all these benefits, right? And and it also comes with an amazing support model. So I want to I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on that more as we go along. 